I owe so much of my life to Crash Bandicoot, it's insane. Some of my earliest adolescent memories are playing the PS1 classics, trying to learn from my older cousins, and then going home to finally conquer an area that I'd been stuck on until it became second nature. It was my introduction to gaming, a shared interest that has gifted me with some of the strongest relationships, and 10 years ago now, talking about this franchise of games kickstarted this YouTube channel. And rightfully so, Crash has become the heart that I wear on my sleeve. But man, isn't that just crazy to think about? 10 years talking about the games that I love so much through all of the good times, the bad times, and the ugly, ugly times. So I wanted to do a special anniversary video as a way of thanking everyone who's been with me throughout this journey, um, as well as to celebrate the creative, oftentimes eccentric and even unpredictable uh, fan base by covering a topic that I've been wanting to discuss now for a very long time. The unhinged world of Crash fan games. See, like a lot of kids, I would take to pen and paper and draw levels based on my favourite games. Regrettably, I never had the patience to learn how to actually make these things a reality, but thankfully, a ton of other people within the community have been producing countless Crash-related mods over the years in stuff like Roblox, Left 4 Dead, building custom levels in Little Big Planet, Dreams, or similar titles, even deconstructing and reconstructing existing games to create new, original experiences. As cool as all of that is, today I want to focus solely on the independent fan games that I've been stockpiling since even before I started talking about Crash on the channel. And you're probably wondering, well, why has it taken me so long to finally make this video? Well, initially, I wanted to wait until Crystal's Wrath was finished. <laughs> No, seriously though, I think my hoarding of all these fan projects just got way out of hand way too quickly. But after 10 years, you know, I think I'm finally ready to do this one. So, let's start crashing. Let's do this. Oh god. What have I gotten myself into? Now. I'm usually quite a critical asshole, but I do want to keep this video fun and light-hearted. I mean, after all, who am I to criticise anyone for trying to make a game? It might be funny to laugh at some of these unfinished or clearly rushed projects, but this is still more of a crash game than I have ever made, so let's celebrate by encouraging a passion for creativity. And trust me, you should definitely stick around because there are a whole ton of awesome gems that we'll be discovering and rediscovering today. Of course, I couldn't start a Crash Fan Games video without talking about this classic from 2007, Crash Bandicoot Flash, or simply known as Flash Bandicoot. While there may have been even older web browser Crash games out there, such as Nitro Golf from 2003, this is definitely the one most people are likely to have encountered first. I mean, god, I, I must have played this for the first time when I was 11 or 12 years old. I'm pushing 28 now and holy shit, this is still a lot of fun, I've got to admit. It features five levels spanning jungles, snow, a temple and even a boulder chase that faithfully emulates the 2D Bandicoot game play nicely. The animation and art style rock with that Newgrounds aesthetic, and by collecting all of the crystals we even get a Ripperoo boss fight. Man, he puts up a good effort too. If only he tried this hard in the actual games, maybe Cortex might have been successful once in a while. According to an old blog post I found from 2008, there were plans to expand this into a fully developed game with upwards of 30 levels and such, but in all of my years, I can't say that I've ever encountered a complete version anywhere online. But that's okay, because I feel like the success of this cult indie hit definitely paved the way for many of the 
2D fan games that we're going to be looking at. Much like Flash, which dawned a new age of artistic expression in the online scene of many fandoms, so did Game Maker, allowing people greater access to development tools. And with greater access comes great responsibility. Now, just a quick reminder, not every game that we'll be looking at today is going to be worthy of that trademark Square Eye Jack 7 out of 10, but I do find games that look like this to be a fun and oddly charming view into the mind of what I can only assume was some kid trying to express themselves within the medium. Is it good? No. But it's probably their first game, so it gets a pass. I mean, damn, there is apparently a lot of game present here, but good luck getting past level 2. If you can do that, then you deserve a medal. Going for a similar art style is Race Against Time, where Dr. Entropy is planning to send Cortex back in time to 1996 to stop himself from making Crash in the first place. Hang on, what's the date on this one? 2015? Wow, okay, so this was made during the heat of Crash's drought period prior to the revival, and just so happened to predict a large aspect of the story in the latest installment? Damn, that's wild. Anyway, it's a shame that I can't say the same for the visuals. As you can see, we've got a Crash 1 styled linear map screen which shows the broad extent this journey is going to take us on. For real, I'm intimidated, but also impressed. The game consists of your brief side-scrolling stages, starring a mix of ripped GBA and Mega Man sprites, mixed in with some gorgeous MS Paint originals. It's basic, but the backgrounds are at least pretty cute, I think. I just love how tiny Crash is. He's so small. He's less of a bandicoot in this game, and more of an insect, judging on the game's perspective. The first boss fight, again, is against Ripper Roo, and holy shit, he is going off, bro! How on earth am I meant to comprehend this? Uh, uh oh, what's gonna happen here? This doesn't look good. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's funny. But it's also a pain in the ass. This sentient minecart moves so quickly, wiping the screen of all life. This... Man, this is impossible! Game over. <laughs> After a lot of trial and error and more game overs, <laughs> I was able to make it up to the next boss, which is a big dingo dial pissing down hellfire like nothing I've ever seen before. Just look at this. I mean, what even needs to be said? When he shoots out the flaming spaghetti meatballs, you're supposed to spin them back to damage him, but they stack like crazy, and with such erratic patterns, I once again got a game over, and because I forgot to save my progress, I was sent back to the minecart chase. No thanks. Game Maker is not all bad though. In fact, some of the greatest and most iconic fan game projects were created using this software. Up next is another side scroller known as Crash Bandicoot Ultimate by Insane Brio, and don't let the title screen fool you. This is a creator who's very familiar with projects of this kind, as this would be their final Crash game before pursuing other projects, and man, what a title to end on. Inspired by the events of Wrath of Cortex, the elementals are back to wreak havoc across familiar locations. We've got platforming, flying stages, underwater... Oh my god, are you kidding me? Man, of all the things to duplicate from Wrath, why this? The game functions well enough though, and feels very complete with gems, secret levels, and even time trials, which you know what, are actually pretty fun. Maybe even more so than the actual Wrath of Cortex. I enjoyed playing through this game, though there were a few things that did stand out. One really inventive thing that I don't recall seeing before is Crash's mech suit now utilising a magnetic attraction gimmick. Turning this on and off allows you to stick to metal surfaces or float around obstacles, but don't fly too high or you'll be launched up into space. Unfortunately, there is a lack of variety leaning heavily on the vehicle stages. Now, I did say this was inspired by Wrath after all. However, the biggest problem is there seems to be a glitch where upon dying within a level, all of the crates are destroyed when you respawn. So, if you want the true experience, then no dying or you'll be left in these barren wastelands. Regardless of that though, I still had a lot of fun playing through this neat little gem. 
I'm always very impressed when I see fully fledged out games complete with warp rooms and extensive collectibles. Most fan games are essentially just 20 minutes of someone messing around in Unity for the first time and publishing something that looks like this. It's all too common, so when I stumble into a more fleshed out experience, I'm immediately on board to see what they've got cooking. Crash Enchanted, created by YoYo Games forum user Firestyle in 2009, is an example of what appears to be a full game, complete with map system broken down into different areas like the Mario titles, and then it opens with an intriguing cutscene starring our favourite heroes and villains in their Titans forms. I mean, Mind Over Mutant had only released the prior year, so keep in mind that these designs were current when this was made. And man, doesn't that make me feel old? While the bad guys bicker, an original character named Enchant is introduced who looks ripped off from something, but I honestly can't put my finger on what exactly. But anyway, as you can see, Crash has all of his moves along with a few new ones like a Donkey Kong style launching system and swimming around like Mario by pressing shift on the keyboard. Yeah, take a guess how that goes. Levels and enemy designs are basic, but complete their role well. Um, there is definitely a lot of 16-bit influence here, which is nice to see, and it does what it can to include a keyboard and mouse control scheme into the regular arsenal of moves. It's not perfect, but a good effort. I did play up to the first boss fight against Dingo Dial, and he's still just as guilty for blasting me into flames. However, it was a much more approachable encounter this time around. But the only reason that I even know of this game's existence was because of another game, Tiki Quest. Firestyle would go on to deliver another Crash fan game two years later, and let me tell you, this one is a must play. Released during a time when the franchise's future was up in the air, much like it is at the moment thanks to Xbox's acquisition of ABK-owned IPs, including Crash, this game sets itself apart with a refined level of quality across the board. All of the artwork and sprites have been drastically improved, areas now feature hub worlds where you can talk to characters and access each level freely, the stages themselves are a lot more enjoyable too thanks to a much improved control system that is sharp, responsive, and fast-paced, introducing even more inventive manoeuvres such as a tornado jump, digging underground, Naruto-style running, and even a fruit launcher later on in the game. Each level is strictly about reaching the end of the stage where you get a chance to win additional lives, wampa, or coins. Coins are used in Pura's shop to purchase lives, extra hits, and even keys to unlock additional secret levels. And with almost every map including both a treasure chest containing a secret collectible and a hidden bonus room where you get to play a little challenge minigame to earn yourself a crystal, man, there is a lot going on here. This feels like an actual game. I mean it is. This is an indie game and I'm devastated for them. This is ultimately freeware and ineligible of distribution, given the, you know, the whole copyright thing. It's a real shame as this is a title that hooked me from the moment I started. There is an evil fake crash named Clyde helping Cortex do things like robbing a museum and generally causing mischief around the place, and with each new battle comes a clever and creative method of attacking. We can throw items around, slide into prone enemies to send them flying, all with highly detailed animations and facial expressions. Mwah, chef's kiss. And not to mention the different vehicle segments too. Everything here is authentic and made with passion from a true fan of the series. Tiki Quest earns itself the Game Award for the largest original game, and if this is the level of quality they were putting out over a decade ago, then I'd absolutely love to see what they're working on now. But look, that's not to say that every good fan game needs to be a completely full experience, as there are plenty of demos and proof of concept games out there, such as Intense Adventure, which sell an equally awesome experience. And hey, if we're giving out game awards, then Best Animation has got to go to this one, because just look at how awesome this is. While it's only a demo in two parts, consisting of six different levels, Man, this makes me long for a legitimate animated Crash game in this style. He is so expressive. Every motion appears effortless, the determination on his little face is unmatched, and the simple art style allows for basic looking levels which still feel complex without being overwhelming. 
it's easy to understand, jump in and save the day. The jumping can be a little bit floaty at times, it did take me a little bit of getting used to, but the movement is highly free flowing making for a great time running for relics. And there is also a funky reimagining on the switch crate which makes boxes appear. No jumping around recklessly with these things or you might lose your ass. And if you want to get wild, then you can jump in the go-kart for some high speed action. And as a big Donkey Kong Country fan, the minecart tribute was well received. Much better than whatever was going going on back in this game. It's a damn shame that this is only a demo, as I would absolutely kill to play more of this. Another fan game that we need to discuss is another Crash Bandicoot fan game, published only two months ago as of making this video, so this one is hot off the presses. And damn, it certainly is coming in hot with more gorgeously animated visuals. This Crash is so cute with his teethies and his little crawl. Outside of the tutorial, we only have two levels to demo right now, but this one is looking really good, so I'll be following this project and keenly awaiting a new update. It's crazy to me that people are still making fan games after all these years, as it's a community movement that I associate most with Crash's absence from the retail scene. You know, during the long hiatus between Mine Over Mutant and the Insane Trilogy, fans took the series into their own hands as a way of maintaining interest and passion. And as a result, at least speaking personally anyway, despite some of the amateur quality, some of these games live rent-free in my head as unofficial, official games within Crash's canon. I mean, take Crash Bandicoot Underwater, for example. This one is as old as the hills. I mean, if you've played Flash Bandicoot, then you've probably also at least heard of Crash Underwater. While it's only a short 10 minute fever dream, the ethereal visuals and surreal atmosphere have stayed with me over the years, and the boss fights are actually not the worst thing ever. What is the worst thing ever is the sequel, Crash Underwater 2. It's lame, and you're not funny. Now where's the ocean? Do you see the ocean? <laughs> Moving on. From the creator of Underwater, another classic is Crash Adventure. Now, this one is your more traditional experience with a warp room, familiar crash locations from the original trilogy, and is mostly remembered for Big the Cat. Yeah, Big the Cat. That, that's what this is most well known for. I mean, there is also an entire Sonic spin-off level, which is pretty nutty to see. Not the only time we're going to see Crash cross over into some other games, by the way. Crash in Retro World lets us roleplay inside of other famous universes, which sees us jumping around on Goombas, painting ourselves blue and running, well, walking around like Sonic. We've got a Pac-Man maze to complete, and wow, even an Undertale-inspired level. Not to be confused with another Undertale Crash Bandicoot game, that is. This is definitely a time capsule, preserving this era in history. It's kind of like trapping a fart in a jar, or whatever that old saying is. You know, you open it up years later and take a big whiff. It's like blunt force trauma to the senses, with a little bit of nostalgia mixed in. <laughs> but before we totally devolve into the 3D Crash games, I want to celebrate some more 2D games by another one of the scene's most long-lasting and consistent creators, Hyper Gollum. This is a guy from Finland who has been actively making fan games for the better part of a decade, starting all the way back in 2012. So, you know, another one of these guys who is just synonymous from that period in time before Crash's grand return onto the scene. So hopefully because of that, you can understand why this guy gets an entire segment of this video entirely dedicated to his work. Now, admittedly, I haven't played everything, but you can see a clear evolution and innovation through his games over the years. There was not one, but three Cortex Conquest games playing as the mad scientist for a change, running around, gunning down enemies, and collecting Wampa, which is kind of strange. I mean, he should be collecting the tears of crying children or something, right? 
Then there was Crash Tiki Might, which has us collecting ancient masks to stop this crazy tiki idol from destroying the world. This one is really good at utilising some lesser known characters, such as these annoying idiots from Mutant, and even the Bearmanator makes an appearance. It's also cool to see the different techniques on display, uh, with the parallax scrolling used for the backgrounds, and clearly, this is from the mind of someone who loves the source material, even going as far to incorporate concepts from cancelled games in the franchise's history. Man, you just love to see it. Apocalypse is when things really take a step up. With the grey Kirby on board for Art Direction now, the graphical quality has improved tenfold. And much like the classics, I find myself actually dying on purpose just to see the fun animations. With the elementals back in action with some fresh hot bods, causing havoc all over the place, it's once again up to Crash to spin, slide and spar with the ancient evil once again. Presentation here is excellent, including the song remixes of original Crash classics, Jack and Daxter songs, and even taking a track or two from Boom Bang and making it absolutely slap. I mean, take a listen. Man, to think that potentially come out of the worst Crash game ever is just baffling to me. The gameplay here is very familiar to much of Gollum's previous work, and I like that by taking on the Wrath influence, not only do we get to confront the Elementals in some brutally difficult fights by the way, but Crash's regular foes also appear within some levels to stand in your way, which is a really nice touch. This idea of mini-bosses appearing within the regular levels is something that I felt would always suit the Crash format that we wouldn't officially see introduced until Crash 4 in 2020. And speaking of 2020, the team collaborated once again to deliver us Psyched Out, starring severely underutilized character Entrance as the primary villain, leading to Crash and Cortex working together once again. Oh, now this is fucking awesome. Going for more of a twin sanity inspired effort this time with a greater emphasis on puzzle solving and exploration within the platforming levels to acquire all of the gems, along with a mix of gameplay styles, this is the amalgamation of all these Hyper Golem titles rolled into one. Everything is being referenced and refined to create a truly authentic experience. This game is another must play. I mean, just trust me. If I can offer up another game award, then Psyched Out is by far the best unofficial follow-up to a Crash game. They just nailed the format perfectly, even without that extra third dimension. Characters travel all over key landmarks and set pieces, encounter a new band of crazy alien creatures to kick the crap out of, and it even goes that extra mile by taking all of those lost Twin Sanity concepts and bringing them to life. After meeting certain characters, we're able to enter their minds to try and find out where Entrance is hiding, and seeing inside the likes of Embryo, Ripperoo, and even Cortex's brain creates for such fun, inventive visuals and enemy designs. I mean, for example, Ripper's world is full of explosives, waterfalls, and Cortex dummies running around getting blown up. Brio's got giant potion bottles which need to be stabilized in order to continue. Of course, we also get a solid interpretation of Gone A Bit Coco, the famous cut to insanity stage inside Sister Bandicoot's brain, and it doesn't even end there. After completing levels in a certain area, you're free to roam around, interact with other characters, and replay levels at your own leisure, maybe to pick up any collectibles you might have missed, which all contribute to unlocking the game dev scrapbook. Again, very to insanity. And once again, the amazing soundtrack is so enthralling, they've even given you a jukebox to listen to all of the songs. And on top of all of that, this might be the first and only fan game that I think I've ever seen, which comes with a beautifully illustrated PDF manual. How sick is that? I legitimately sat and scrolled through before starting the game just to emulate that childhood vibe of reading the game manual on the way home from the store. I mean, these guys get it. They've gone above and beyond, and it's clearly 
It's, it's clear they've put a lot of love into this one, so please go out, play this game. I'll have all of the featured games linked below so that you can check them out for yourself. Psyched Out is an absolute show stealer and a rightful place to finish up with the 2D fan games. Now, of course, that's not every fan game. I mean, God, if I tried to play them all, then we'd be here for another 10 years, but I want to shift focus now into the 3D stuff because... Man, that's... that's a whole new Wild West, and I am terrified of what we're going to find after this quick ad break. And now, a quick message from today's sponsor, Patreon. If you like what you see here on the channel, it's all thanks to the support of our incredible community over on Patreon. By pledging, you are directly helping me to keep content flowing, and you'll also unlock rewards from regular updates about the channel, early access to new videos, as well as some Patreon-exclusive content with every new upload. Patreon is the only place to see me building Mario Kart sets, playing Fortnite, baking cookies, and a whole lot more, so link is in the description. Cheers, guys. Alright, so you know how Game Maker and Flash allowed people to really get creative and express themselves by providing tools for anyone with a neat idea to publish and share that with the world? Well, let's take a look and see what Unity has to offer. Hell yeah! This is badass! Oh, look at him go! This is awesome! Let's see if we can get up on this big mountain over here. Oh, oh we can! Shit! I wonder if Little Man can come up here with us. Don't be scared, little fella. Oh, he, he too shy to climb the mountain. Alright, next one is Crash Bandicoot Adventure Demo. And... Well, I, I guess we're a free-range bandicoot in this one. He's, he's free to frolic through the wilderness and explore to his heart's content. It's got another big hill to climb up, and at the top we can find some extra lives. Is that really it? I know this is just a demo, but... A demo of what? Alright, third time's the charm. Let's try out Crystal Forever. Look at him go! Move over, bad man reviews. You've got some competition for the fiercest dance moves. <laughs> oh God. I'm sorry, man. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> okay, so this one looks like it has a little bit more going on. It's clearly in the early stages of development still, but... Um... I can't really describe how it feels to play. I mean, this is beyond stiff. Whether I'm using the keyboard or a controller, yes, these games actually have controller support most of the time, it's like Crash's movement is locked into a four-directional axis, and anything outside of that range, which turns out is most of the damn game, is simply impossible to traverse. Come on, get over there! Ugh, bloody rat! Crystal Forever 2 has the same problem, but I can see that at least a little more effort has gone into this one, with the original Crash model, the tribal villagers scattered through the levels. This one is trying to be Twin Sanity, which is ironic because it somehow manages to capture everything that's bad about that game, uh, but this one also includes a boss fight, so let's check it out. that I mean <laughs> ah, holy Christ almighty you've got to have some fucking reflexes to do this shit oh that's scary dude but hey if that's not enough terror for you then let's check out crash.exe yeah it's it's one of these unoriginal unfunny and unfucking believable from uninspired to unfair Crash Bandicoot, well, yeah, truer words were never spoken. I mean, ignoring the fact that this is hard as balls, the fact that you fall through the damn platforms certainly makes it a whole lot more fucking challenging, doesn't it? Oh, man. It's like a dark cloud has washed over us all of a sudden. 
And speaking of dark, well, check out Crash for PC. I mean, firstly, these all use the same Crash model, which always looks disgusting in the Unity engine, but uh, what is there to say on this one? I mean, they tried, but everything is so damn dark that I can't see where I'm going, what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh, and now it's foggy as well. Great. Yeah, I love that. You've got to climb up to high ground just to see where the hell I am. Man, I still can't see bloody anything. I accidentally wandered out of the map. God, surely these can't all be bad. I mean, what about Crash Bandicoot Legacy? Let's give this one a try. Alright, you win. I'll admit defeat. Can we just... Can we just go back to looking at the 2D stuff in Game Maker, please? This game is called Crash Snowball 2. <sighs> you know, on second thought, Maybe we should stick with the 3D games just a little bit longer. Alright, obviously I'm taking the piss a little, and some of these games were also surely just made for a laugh and not to be taken seriously. But even if they are someone's hard work, please remember that I'm only half serious. Again, I've never made a Crash game myself, so everyone featured in the video is already more accomplished than me in that regard. I'd hate to ruin anyone's dreams here, which is something that I'd like to address with the next game, Mayhem. This game first circulated in February of 2015, and hey, that's when I first circulated as well. Man, I remember playing this one at the time, and a lot of people mocked it for various reasons, but I always found it to be quite neat, actually. I mean, firstly, I love this Crash design. It's goofy, it's got attitude, I think he looks really good. We start out in a huge sprawling open beach area with a bunch of box challenges and enemies around the place. We then find various portals that take us into actual platforming stages, hog ride levels, with a mix of Sonic's ass and side-scrolling gameplay. While the controls here are far from perfect, the Body Slam has an incredible rebound that keeps the flow of movement fast. In fact, this is actually the origin for one of the game's mechanics being the Combo Meter. Keeping your air time off of crates and enemies fills the gauge up, which is such a cool and original concept. It's just a shame that there are very little checkpoints and no continues or options to save your progress, which leads to this one being incredibly difficult to play through. And since the negative attention the creator received at the time, this game has since been delisted, which is unfortunate to see. I mean, look, not to preach or anything, especially since I'm also sitting here criticising people and making jokes, but I do want to make the point clear that game design is an art form which requires years of experience and failures to learn how to get good at. And no matter how silly some of these games may appear, I hope that they're all stepping stones on someone's journey towards future projects. I mean, take this one for example, Hypercrystal. We saw this creator just a moment ago. The original version of this game that I've had saved on my PC from years and years ago was admittedly borderline unplayable. I mean, it controlled so poorly to the point where I can't even make it through the first level. But checking in on their projects, I found Hypercrystal Respun, a remaster of that older game that plays way better than the old one. It's got a fresh coat of paint, much more fluent and flexible controls, and some neat level concepts, bonus rounds to earn gems. It's good. I like this one now. So, don't ever feel like criticism can hold you back, because the potential for growth is unlimited. Oh, <sighs> Jesus, okay, and speaking of, here is Crash Unlimited, with just a bunch of trash all dumped into one space. I mean, just look at this, it's atrocious, but I will admit, it is fun exploring. We can find Crunch hanging out on top of this big temple. There's a huge entrance up in the sky looming over the entire game, which is funny. And I actually stumbled into a more linear level where Crash is microscopic. 
Seriously, why is he so small? In fact, Crash is so tiny that the only thing smaller than him is this skeleton. <laughs> Next on our radar is Crashed Bandicoot. This was submitted as part of a game jam in 2018. Crash in the style of a Quantic Dreams game. You know, the David Cage classics centered on depressing vibes, unnatural characters and batshit hoax writing. Yeah, those games. Here, mm -hmm. Crash is depressed after the death of Coco, aimlessly walking around, exhaustedly picking up Wampa fruit, and by the end of the game when he's confronted by Cortex, ultimately decides that death is hey? the easiest way out. Hey? Man. <laughs> Alright, well, another well done shit post is Trash Blandy Cook. Turn your RTX off for this busted ass game. Love so much. Visually, it's a bloody mess. The characters, story, and even locations are all just cheap knockoffs from the first game. And that music? That a cappella soundtrack done by some random kid alone in his room, trying not to wake up his parents? It's like nails on a chalkboard. And I love all of it. This game is so much fun. I mean, look at him go. Crash got the moves. All of the silly animations, all of the homemade sound effects stacking as you walk around. It's a total clusterfuck. What a beautiful mess. And surprisingly, this one actually controls really well. Better than many of the other fan games that we're looking at. So that just makes the entire thing that much more hilarious. The final boss is a unicorn which shoots lasers and some bird thing. Jesus, calm down. Bastard just chomps your head off and that's it. <laughs> so, moving on from that shit show to what I really hope is another intentionally bad game because, well, if it's not, then it means that someone's escaped from their padded cell. Introducing Crash Bandicoot The Secret Place. What have I got? Fuck me dead. If that's not the most appalling first impression of a game that I'm ever going to see, then just kill me now. Jesus, the state of this thing. Big Snout over here got them salad fingers going on. And then once the hip hop music kicks in, Gangster doesn't know if he's Crip or Blood. Well, now he's neither. He's dead. <laughs> Shit, man, that is just too good. Like I said, I don't know if this is a meme or someone's actual passion project, but let me just say that I wish I was talented enough to make something this funny. This man's out here ending careers, because nothing I can say will ever do it justice. <sighs> Alright, something different now. If you're into walking simulators, then Crystal's Power is the game for you. That's all you really do in this one, is walk around some empty environments. Uh, hey, do you know what we haven't done for a while? Climb up a damn mountain? Here is another game where Crash has trouble walking. You just kind of stumble into these impossible scenarios, and as soon as you think you've got the hang of it, some asshole snowman blows you to smithereens. Ugh, look, you know what? I think it's time we get revenge on these shitty games. I mean, if we had Custer's Revenge on Atari 2600, then I guess Crash Bandicoot's Revenge Fan Game Edition fits well enough. Let's do this. Oh, okay. I see how it is. And this is child's play stuff. What's the next level? Okay, man, someone thinks they're really funny, dickhead. And it just gets worse and worse. You know, I like finding these little cliches and tropes within the fan titles. Things like people recreating certain box configurations from the original games. 
This, however, is just an abhorrent mockery of the franchise, but at least we do finally get to kill Cortex at the end. Oh, wait. Can we kill Cortex? Oh, oh, okay, there he goes. Ah, oh, the pain. The sweet pain. Oh, that does it. I have had it with you two. I'm going to kill both of you. Bring it on, Uka Uka. If it's challenge that you want, then look no further than Trush Bandicoot. Hang on, didn't we play this one already? Oh, no, wait, that was Trash Bandicoot. This one is Trush. Kind of like Crash got the thrush or something. I don't know. This is a simple demo of what looks like a very impressive project. The Warp Room presentation is excellent, and I love the little diorama of the map in the center. But if the actual gameplay is anything to go off of, then this one is gonna break your balls. I mean, firstly, your movement is quite stiff, and even slightly off axes, which I've found it can be quite annoying trying to compensate for while making your jumps. Uh, one cool thing is that there is a large variety of new crates included, but they're each just a complete roll of the dice the first time you come across them. Now, this one is a relatively new release, being uploaded just last year, so I'm not surprised to see one of the better gimmicks of Crash 4 making its fan game debut. Lenny Lowly's switching mechanic, which is used to turn certain crates on or off, is definitely one of the highlights to come out of 4, but unfortunately here, man does it make things complicated. This is no holds barred, which is a shame, because visually, the atmosphere is through the roof. It looks amazing, and I love that we're finally in the era of early 3D aesthetics making a comeback. But man, the nail in the coffin for me is just the layout of this level. You've got your forwards gameplay, side scrolling too, but sometimes the path takes you along diagonal routes, which just doesn't work for Crash, as there is no consistent way for keeping yourself aligned within the walkable terrain. There's a lot of potential here, but it definitely needs some work. Alright, well now, as we start to come towards the end of this video, I'd just like to acknowledge that we've definitely had some fun at the expense of a few of these games and gotten all of our laughs out of the way, so let's instead focus on a few of the more impressive fan games that I think I may have ever seen. Starting off with a Crash Bash remake? Yeah, if Crash Team Rumble isn't the multiplayer experience you're looking for, then boy, you're gonna be stoked to see this. Crash Bash has been remade from the ground up to absolute perfection. Trust me when I say that this is almost one to one, which is insane given this is by an indie developer. Characters move and feel exactly the same as the original title, minigames play out with just as much randomness, and the overall presentation is immaculate. I absolutely love seeing the designs for all these little fellas. They're all so cute looking. I mean, even Rilla Roo is a babe. I just want to grab his little cheeks and wiggle them around. But as an improvement, the difficulty also seems to be somewhat adjusted, making rounds feel less like a chore. Thank God for that. Look, honestly, even though it's not perfect, this is definitely how I plan on replaying this game in the future, as even the story mode is all pretty much here. In a slightly strange move, however, all of the bosses and NPC characters are replaced by the generic lab assistants, which is kind of dumb. You know, it's called Papu Pummel for a reason. Where is he? Let me pummel him! But on the plus side of that, you can unlock additional characters by playing through the story mode and input codes to access even more, including the likes of Jack and Daxter, Spyro, Sonic, and even Gex, which is pretty funny. I mean, all that's missing is Ratchet and Clank. The sound design needs some work though, as most of the characters are voiced by the creator of the game, who just kind of meekly repeats already existing lines of dialogue. But hey, overall, this is an incredibly stellar fan game, and one that I can definitely recommend. But which Crash Bash remake should you play? This one? Or the other remake known as Crash Bash Live? Yes, two Bash-related games. From community member Beta M and Team Nitro comes more of a reimagining on the Bash formula and building on the original in a way that I would describe as what this game maybe should have always been, or perhaps what it would look like had it been released today. 
This project has been 10 years in the making, and it shows, because the clear dedication poured into this game is bountiful. Again, we've got all of your core minigames, many of which include some new original variations such as the Blackout Pogo Arena, a variety of new and interesting ball types in the ping pong modes, and countless other modifiers, all of which can be switched up to your heart's content. I will say that graphically, this game is less consistent than the other one. As you can clearly see, many levels appear more as vague representations rather than authentic recreations, and some characters have original models, while Crunch here is ripped right out of Boom Bang, I think. It just looks so out of place. And by the way, where are Kong and Rillaroo? Instead, we've got Nina and Crunch, which is fine, but from what I can tell, this game only has has these eight characters to choose from, and coming off of such an expanded roster makes it feel a little weak. But where Live makes up for it though, is with so much of everything else that I don't even care. We've got unlockable cosmetic items for each character in their respective vehicles. We've got new minigame types, swapping characters in story mode, a crate crush styled 100 player battle royale mode, bowling minigames ported over from tag team racing with some original layouts to try, the arcade ladders which randomly cycle minigames and modifiers for that quick pop in and play fun, jumping off of the polar bear whenever you please, and a festival mode akin to Mario Party where players take turns rolling the dice and moving around the map earning crystals and coins, or playing quick rounds of mini-games together, and all of this serving as a way of earning points towards a battle pass system that unlocks more maps, more modifiers, more customization. Now this is what I call a fucking fan game. Holy shit. The only thing this is missing is online multiplayer, which is still in development, so in the meantime, Parsec is a suitable option for playing this with your friends, and I highly recommend it. Both of these Bash games are tremendous and each offer a different experience. One is a remake, faithful and polished up to the modern standard and has got to win the award for best fan-made remake, obviously. While the other one takes a beloved game and evolves it into the modern era to deliver the best adaptation that fans could possibly hope for. So yeah. Everyone is a winner all around, especially us players who get to mess around and enjoy the end product absolutely for free. I know it's kind of a meme to say this, but seriously, Activision, Xbox, hire fans. They know what's good. Okay, we've got just one game left to discuss, and I think that I've saved the best for last. So let's go back in time to discover an instant classic. As the game's page suggests, this is indeed an adoring love letter to the classic PS1 trilogy, utilising the same visual style and bringing it into the current generation, and man is it a trip down memory lane. From the Crash 2 styled warp room setup, level themes from multiple games, and in a new update, even Coco is a playable character now and can be swapped between freely at any time. This is really cool. I mean, when the Insane Trilogy did this originally, I, I was kind of like, that's, that's cool, but I just, sort of whatever. Um, but Crash 4 has really done a lot for Coco, I think, and seeing her retro model running around complete with charming animation suited to her character is almost a dream come true. It really makes me wish we could have done this in the originals back in the day. Now, speaking of playing the game, the controls and physics etc have been built from seemingly scratch, which is also very impressive to see, as they got it about 90% correct. It does feel different, the analogue movement is you know, super smooth and buttery, which does mess with your muscle memory at first, but it is an easy adjust. Definitely the best controls that I've seen all day, and honestly, that makes me so happy to be able to say that. We've really come a long way from the titles who pioneered the fan game space, and just to see what people are making these days is mental. Everyone on the team and within the community as a whole should be really proud. This game really scratches that bandicoot itch, running through simple yet fun levels, finding gems, secret coloured gems which are often rewarded for completing a challenge within the stage, but each level also contains a flashback tape a la Crash 4 which is rad, as they were definitely some of the most challenging stages in that game to complete perfectly and serve as a really good reward. 
I mean, any game that offers additional gameplay as rewards is always a winner in my book. But not only that, we've also got five ancient scrolls to find which unlock Uka Uka's trials. And man, these take the flashback formula to the next level. In a shocking twist, we can now recover the evil mask from a crate, acting as a time trial. But what's really cool is that because we're running on Crash 2 rules, there is no double jump or any other special abilities here. But, if you're holding an Uka mask, he zaps Crash on the bum, allowing him to gain a little bit of extra height. It's less of a double jump and closer related to Spyro's hover move that lets him get a little extra boost over ledges. This is an awesome gimmick and one that I'd love to see implemented into future mainline games. The only gripe that I have with this is that they didn't attempt to create any boss battles, which is a little bit upsetting. You know, they haven't all been 5 star fights, but it's still been really nice seeing how creative people have been able to get with them, but more so, man, I just wish there was more of this game. Well. We're in luck, because probably the biggest selling point of Back in Time is the Crash Creator. Yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. This is an in-depth tool you can use to go all Mario Maker and build custom 2D stages. That is fucking sick. What a money-making idea, because it doesn't matter how simple or complex your abilities and ideas may be, anyone can make a fun crash level using this tool. We've got access to all of the different crates, including the all-new original boxes to play with further, a strong roster of enemies, a plethora of themed blocks to work with building up terrain, and so many background assets to mix and match to create unique-looking worlds. So you know what? After all of my criticism, I think it's finally time I put my skills to the test and design my own custom level. I mentioned at the top that this is what I always wanted to do when I was younger, so I got ambitious. Maybe a little too ambitious. Planning everything out, taking a little bit of Metroid influence with a twisting cave system that loops back onto itself, with puzzles leading to dead ends, which obviously need completing if you want that box gem. Then, after mapping it all out and literally taking my time over a couple of hours, fully immersed in the creative process, this was my end result. Corruption Caves. It starts out in the jungle as Crash approaches this huge Cortex facility and after avoiding a sneaky TNT trap, we take the plunge into the depths. Here we can complete a tricky platforming challenge for the hidden gem before climbing and crawling through the mechanical corridors. These lead out into a wide open tube area which is currently locked off by these crates, so exploring back out into the surrounding underground tunnels, we can see all of the pollution leaking out of this facility, turning all of the inhabitants hostile and crazy. After nabbing a crystal, we finally reach the bottom of this giant tube, which may be the launch site of a rocket, or perhaps a huge toxic waste container. Who knows? But with the gates now unlocked, we've got to make the challenging climb up through this thing, remembering to collect all of the boxes along the way. And finally, once we're out on top, we hit the detonator to destroy Cortex's facility, before making one last very technical jump across the shattered bridge above a bed of spikes, and across to the other the side to safety. This was such a fun project to engage in, and hell, there are countless other player created levels that you can check out already in the game, as well as an entire Discord server with people sharing their own creations. So you can head over there right now if you want to play Corruption Caves for yourself. But overall, I have to give one final award to the team behind Back in Time. The award for just making a fucking kick-ass fan game. I've had so much fun today exploring all of these different games from the wonderful and wacky to the unreal and surreal and seeing the unlimited potential just, just has me awestruck. Finally taking on this huge video after so long has really left an impact on me personally. Looking back on the start of my journey both as a member of the Crash community as well as the larger YouTube community as a whole. Now, I do still have one more fan game to discuss, and it might just be the strangest of them all. But let me tell you, the personal impression it left on me was just unreal, and the story behind its existence is an absolute roller coaster to say the least. So, cliffhanger time! <laughs> be sure to tune in next week when we take a look.
Remember to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any new videos. And if you enjoyed this video, then the best way to support the channel is by sharing it with your friends on social media. And until next time, I'm Square Eye Jack, and I hope you have a great fucking day. Thanks for watching.